much, but my overarching, how is it possible that your government, your party, could look at what you were trying to do and honestly believe it when most of us sat here going, it's never going to fly in a million years? Look, we, we, the fact remains we still have a shortfall of houses in this country. Um, the, the estimates are anywhere between 70,000, 120, 130. So we are short those houses. They're not all going to be um, Kiwi-built houses, obviously. Um, that One of the things that we have managed to ramp up um, since we've been in government is returning to actually building public housing again. We had a target of 1,600. We've delivered 2,200 this year. So that we have to be looking right across the whole spectrum of, of how we deliver houses. The other thing is actually the private sector is um, seeing that there, there is demand for these affordable houses oh. coming on board and is starting to deliver. That doesn't answer the question, though. How is it you ever believed that you could build 100,000 houses yeah. in 10 years when all of us were sitting here going, you can't do it? Well, look, we still have to build houses. We're not moving away from that. We're not moving away from yeah, the fact that Kiwi say, build, will that. deliver. What you said is we'll build 100,000 houses. Yeah, look, and absolutely. But what we're saying is putting the targets in place, the way in which they were operating, we're having really perverse outcomes. They were starting to drive the policy. Now, targets yeah, are only... but why couldn't you see that, is, is, is what I'm asking. Look, we could all see it. You two, couldn't. Hindsight, and two years down the track... It wasn't of, hindsight. No, no I I'm could, saying I now, could see it. Now, now, in terms of when I lifted the hood on the policy and had a look at what was working and what wasn't, that actually what the targets were doing were leading us to um, not concentrate on getting the right house in the right place. It was mm. about chasing the target oh. and getting the numbers stacking up. And actually, what we need to be doing is concentrating on making sure we're supplying Buying, um, homes that first home buyers demand because when we get it right, Monarch, North Coat, d demand is outstripping supply. The market's doing it. The, the number of first home buyers in the market is at record levels. Yeah, but also what we're seeing is um, more affordable houses are entering the market. And Kiwi Build needs to take some credit for that. When I drive around Christchurch and I see billboards saying home and land packages for 460000 being delivered by the market, mm. that is a good sign. Now, Kiwi Build is a lever. It's not an outcome. And I think one of the mistakes we made is that we did start to see it as an outcome of itself rather than a lever the government has to pull to ensure that we are delivering affordable homes. Before you got this job, did you hand on heart believe you could build 100,000 houses or were you sitting there quietly going, we've blown this? Oh, look, I think collectively as a government, we know that we've got a job to do, that we, we don't have enough houses in this country. We've got to deliver more for New Zealanders. Um, but I think one of the things that we see that Kiwi Build is just part of the mix of the kind of houses that we have to deliver um, and that we are committed to making sure that New Zealanders um, have access to homes for too long. This is a problem that has been a long time in the making um, since the 1990s, and it's well, not well, going to be fixed that. overnight. So a couple of things. You talked yesterday, I mean, the, the, the amount of ownership is mid-60s-ish. It goes up a bit, it goes down a bit. It always has been. It's on par with Australia, Japan, Canada, Europe, the UK, most of the world. It's, it's not on a par with what we used to be. No, it is. It's yeah. Historically speaking, it's mid-60s. We've it's been falling been since the 1990s in yeah, terms of yeah, rates If you want to go over a ownership. short period of time, that, that peaked at a very high level at 69%. It's now down to mid-60s. Within a margin, we own the same number of homes that we always have. Most of the world does. There's the highest number of first-home buyers in the market right now than there ever has been. People are basically solving their own problem. They don't necessarily, apart from the fringes, need the government. Yeah, but a lot of the home ownership is actually propped up um, by, by baby boomers um, who, who did get the help from the government to buy their houses through state advances corporations. I mean, many of us, that's how their parents bought their house. But what we do have is generationally a group of young people that are increasingly shut out of the housing market. And we see young people and their parents and their grandparents worried about the fact they won't have the same opportunities at home ownership that they did. Well, and that, that is why myth. we that, need to get well, into it. With respect, it. it's a myth. They're not shut out of the housing market. They're shut out of the housing market for one of two reasons. Either the house is too expensive and or they don't have the money to buy the house. If they wanted to get into property, there are plenty of places in this country they can get into at a very, very reasonable price. What people want is to live in the house they buy. If they want to live in Auckland, it's expensive. It's always been expensive. Every city in the world is expensive yeah. and it shuts people out. Yeah, and sometimes people have to be in particular places for work. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things that we're trying to get over. People can often afford the mortgage. It's the deposit that's the stumbling block. And that's where we've really concentrated our efforts of actually saying there are some things we can do in terms of the Home Start grants, allowing more people to pull them together, um, that we can um, reduce that deposit amount. Because when you're paying a mortgage payment and rent, um, a lot of people get really frustrated with that and think, mm. well, actually, if I could just get that deposit together, 
together, I could get a foot on the housing ladder. And they are the New Zealanders that we're backing and why we're not giving up on this. We didn't get it right in the first okay. place, but the got fi- to keep on trying. The 5% as in the deposit, what's the limitation in terms of income and what you can buy oh, with that? Look, the, no- the normal um, lending criteria right. in terms of income that a commercial bank will operate will but how operate much, but so, so they will work that out for themselves. Yeah. So, and, and so that will be based on income. So yeah. actually, have you helped anybody at all? Yeah, so it's reducing the amount of the deposit. So we're yeah, talking I know, about that, a I know 40... that, but I mean, if, you, if, if your problem wasn't, if your problem is servicing the mortgage, it's still yeah. servicing the mortgage. So th- there's two things. There's one about actually the amount of the deposit, and that's where they're dropping it to 5% mm. for people co- that qualify for that. But the servicing the mortgage is being addressed through the $400 million um, shared, the, the progressive ownership scheme. That is about saying there are people that are on the cusp of home ownership but have been excluded from that opportunity, and that's where we want to get alongside people and help them. So that's the whole purpose of Having that. said that, that announcement yesterday, this isn't happening, is it? This has got to yet go to cabinet and yet be ticked off, right? Oh no! Look, the the four hundred million dollar fund and the design and, and the the will to do a progressive home ownership that has been ticked off by cabinet. That's part of what the decisions that I took around the reset. What we have said is that in terms of the detailed design about it, the income thresholds, all those kind of things, that's got to be worked through. We've got to work through with people that are currently doing this, like yeah. the Housing Foundation. So that's Habitat not going to cabinet until December, right? Oh, end of the by the end of this okay, year. Okay, so you're in to election year by the time you're delivering on that part of the policy. So that, in other words, is your entire first term of Kiwi Build basically being an anchor, a disaster, and a nightmare oh, for look, you. I, I, th- I, think, um, I think that's um, uh, overblowing it. I want you to consider this. It took two years for the first Labour government to have people moving into the first state house. Building houses takes time. This is a long time in the make- making. A lot of the things that we ha- did promise at the election that we have delivered on are starting to, to, to improve things. But look, we, we are committed to fixing this. This isn't going to be fixed overnight. There is no single silver magic no. bullet. We've just got to keep well, working on behalf of New Zealanders. That's the great realisation. Having said that, so you've got these houses in Wanaka. The houses you have built, yep. you're going to flick onto the open market. If you can't sell a house in Wanaka, you can't sell a house. They're oh, desperately short of houses oh, in Wanaka and Central Otago yeah, in general. And you, you build them, no one wants them. No, look, the, people do want the houses. Well, they don't. No, what they don't, what it is, is that Kiwi build first home buyers don't want the houses. So those houses are part of a larger development that are, is around a, a thousand mm. houses. It's staged. Um, the ones that haven't been badged as Kiwi build, same house, same price point, they've been selling. In fact, over a third of those have already sold. So we know there is demand for the houses. It's just not from the Kiwi build co hoarder buyers. They were in the wrong house in the wrong pl- place. Um, we need to, to call time on that and say that actually um, the government needs to get its capital out of that and recycle that back into schemes like Northcote, Monarch and Wellington where we know there is huge demand from first home buyers. One of the things that might come back to bite you is you're going to put up this board every month and say here's what we've done in housing. Uh, under your old scheme it would have been about 200 houses a week. That was the theory. 10,000 a year, 800 a month, 200 a week. W- what's it going to be? Is it going to be, is it going to be one or is it going to be 13 oh, look, or some none? months it will be great and some months it won't what, be what's a great month um, a great month is delivering more houses for New Zealanders but look so the, anything above one <laughs> is a great month look what we do know is that we we currently have 500 old houses under construction that are Kiwi built houses we know there are 9,900 in the pipeline people can see the direction of that delivery but it won't just be Kiwi built that we'll be reporting on we'll also be showing the number of houses that the market are delivering under the Kiwi build threshold so that we will see whether or not the Kiwi build is being the lever it needs to be to shift us into um, more affordable houses being provided. We'll also report on things like how many state houses are we building? Mm. Um, how many uh, how many um, temporary accommodation spaces are we providing? So it's the whole housing picture. And we're going to front up each month with that. Good on you. Well, we'll talk about this again, I'm sure. I'm sure we nice will. Nice to see you. Appreciate time very much. Megan Woods, it is 13 minutes away from nine.